Yo, what is up, guys? We're gonna be covering in this video freaking a feeble back epidemic. I see too many people skipping any form of lower back work. It kind of seems in this day and age that when it comes to back training, all we care about is kind of the lats, pretty much like mainstream. And then some people will worry about upper back, etc. It's like we've completely forgotten about the erectors. That's what gives you the juicy, thick back that we are desiring. That we want to look like guts. It, like what I'm really getting at here, it's kind of like replacing things like barbell rows, bent over rows with the dumbbells, unsupported rows. And if you're like doing that on leg training, like avoiding lower back work on a leg day, that's even crazier. But I'm just talking about back within this video and swapping these exercises for chest supported variations, which have their place in certain scenarios. And I'm going to be honest, you know, I kind of fell into this a little bit where I was like, oh, no, no, no. I, I, was, I wasn't terrible because I'd still train low back on leg days and stuff. But I'd be like, oh, I can't do low back on my back days because it's fatigued from the leg days. However, when you're horsing a lot of weight, well, you should be horsing a lot of weight in contrast on your leg day compared to like a row on your back day. So it's not actually really going to fatigue you whatsoever unless you got like insane doms or like you really went hard or you have not recovered efficiently. And I'll get into that later and that's where the chest supported things kind of come into play here. You know, there are tool in the box. Oh, there's a little bug on me. It's a tool in the box that contains the tools that you can then later use in specific scenarios, but too many people just kind of disregard unsupported growth. So that's what, that is what I'm going to get into. Now, with the feeble back epidemic, as I said, people are, are scared to train their lower back. But as I already mentioned, if we want that thick horse rhino, yeah, rhino, a rhino back, we look like guts, we need the thick, juicy erectors. The huge erectors is what like makes the back stand out from other people. And then even if we look like what are erectors good for? It's like a very functional thing, just like picking stuff up. As humans, the most primal thing is just picking something off the ground. How are you going to pick something off the ground without using your erectors and your lower back? And like when I see people go like pick something up, right? And they try to do like a perfect hinge and keep their back straight. Don't even get me into that. Your back can round. You just need to chain train that position in order to be comfortable. Let's go into this for a bit. Even with injuries, you know, people be hurting their lower back. It's one of the most common injuries is cause you have a feeble lower back. Your lower back is not strong. You get a really... Freaking strong, super strong lower back. It's a lot harder to injure it. Like, of course, you could be an idiot and somehow do something and injure your lower back. But, you know, if I'm zurching over 100 kilos from the floor, am I going to hurt my back picking something up? Like, it's going to be pretty difficult for me to actually do that. So when we're training our back, why not get some extra lower back volume in? It's like we, on the back day, you just completely skip this entire section of your back that is super important, not only for functionality, strength, moving around and stuff, picking stuff up, but also aesthetics. So like, even if you're someone who's like, I only care about aesthetics, bro, that you should still be horsing some weight build up the lower back now what are some exercises that we can mention ones that kind of get swapped out they should be kept in so far as like on the back day stuff like bent over barbell rows super nice now that being said if you'd end up turning it into a leg exercise then like by all means like yeah that's probably a bit much to have on a singular back day if you have trained your lower back on a leg day beforehand so I, i'm talking about like super heavy cheap barbell rows where it's almost turning into kind of like an rdl but when it comes to like bent over rows with the dumbbells single arm bent over rows getting that core stabilization in cash money i don't know who says cash money it's a bald only man 
or is it Bugenhagen? Anyway, that's cash money, single arm, dumbbell rows, core stability in there. Getting a little bit of QL work, you know, you have to like stabilize this way and you just do the rows. Instead of what most people do, they have the dumbbell, they like stabilize themselves with their arm, then they like do the rows like this, like bro, you may as well get some extra lower back and ab work in there. Often people will like switch stuff like this out for like a chest supported row, like a seal row. Now these all have their place in certain scenarios. Now I'm gonna get into this now. When should you use like chest supported rows and stuff? So number one, if you're injured bro, you've messed up your programming, you haven't been super smart, and you've hurt your lower back. Like obviously, yeah. Do the chest supported role so you can still train your back. Now, if you want to hit more back volume on a leg day, if you're doing like a density day, then you want to hit back. Because you can hit back a lot. Your back's really good at just recovering and stuff. So if you've gone from like super heavy RDLs, you'll hit more back than like, yeah, adding a chest supported variation would be smart because your erectors will be tired from the rdls number three is having it as like a rotation so for example i have my back day you know and then 90 percent of the time i'm doing the chad bent over rows however maybe 10 percent of the time i went super super hard on a leg day i haven't had as much recovery as i desire therefore i'm still a bit beat up and then i have that option in the program where okay if i don't feel up for it and then I can do a chest supported row this time just to allow for a little bit more recovery. But the majority of the time, I'm doing the Chad unsupported rows. These are the best way to use the chest supported rows, the supported rows. But I do believe if you want to get jacked, stacked, maxed, I can't think of another word. If you want to get like that, it's best to do unsupported variations majority of the time do not end up having lats and then small erectors and even anyway i'd argue that your back wants to work together you know so if you're working on the muscle group together you make a bit more gains bro you're just gonna look better in general lastly i'll cover a little bit more in functionality just picking stuff up throughout the day it is like crazy that majority of people that oh you're gonna like hurt your back in the gym if you actually train your back in the gym you're not going to hurt your back you end up hurting your back in the gym because you don't train your back you do not train your lower back so then you kind of have an imbalance there imagine right you don't train your lower back and you only do like chest supported stuff right and you get like really freaking strong at that the discrepancy there is crazy. So like when you eventually go to train your back, your other areas are so much stronger than your lower back. That is just like a ultimate recipe for disaster. Snap City has entered the chat. Therefore, do not let yourself get to that point. If you notice yourself get to that point, this is the video to let you realize that. Start training your lower back on your back days. You know, have a bit of nuance. I'm not saying that if you're completely destroyed to still train your lower back because that would be dumb be smart use the brains use your brain power if i think could i do it now that being said do not be a feeble back human being just because the unsupported variations are harder it's easier just to go on a chest supported thing then smash it out than to like actually get your whole body engaged locked in and actually doing reps to failure like that that's the end of this video guys i do coaching so if you struggle with the gym and you just want some guy to be able to help you personally you know, i like my coaching in the sense that it is more of a mentorship in a sense where i help engage you to the entire process instead of i see these other coaches man where they just give you like a cookie cutter program they don't even talk to you every week, right? Which is crazy, but that is digressing. Link is in the description if you want to apply for that.